Welcome everybody to Coaching Live. We are here in uh, Malaga live with a group of people. Yes, and it's, it's going to be a pool party here today, the kickoff of the tryout sessions of filming the first coaching sessions of, of uh, the coaching movie. And a kickoff to the swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, maybe we'll jump with everybody here uh, into the swimming pool later on. What you can expect during this program? So we would have a first a conversation with Betsy and we would like to ask her a special question that she doesn't know about it yet. And then we would have uh, Julie as a coach and uh, a, a short coaching session that she will present her style of coaching and we will have a discussion with her and uh, some tips for you also. And uh, then Clinton will, uh, will also do a coaching session. He has a completely different style of coaching. And um, there will be also something for you to learn and some, some tips that you would be able to practice after this live uh, webcast. And it's an interactive webcast. It's an interactive show that, which aims is to inspire you when you're sitting at home or you're on the road, doesn't matter. You see probably a chat window on your screen if you go to coachingmovie.com slash live. I'm going to give you the address right now on your screen so you can see it. And if you go there, then you can participate in the chat. So on the right hand side, you see already a message is appearing. And I'm very curious who you are, where you're webcasting from or you're following this show and what is your main question for this show that you'd like to have answered maybe we cannot address it this time but maybe next time so yes. this is a and show made for you and uh, about this time we would also like that you think about questions that you would like to ask julie and clinton our coaches and uh, this show is live because you would like to learn more about the secrets uh, of coaching, behind the scenes of coaching, and uh, to have real interaction, real uh, examples of coaching sessions, the best practices here live with you. And you are also welcome to participate as coaching clients, if not uh, this time, maybe next time. So we are waiting for your interaction and, uh, and your um, questions in the chat window. Yes, actually, if you would like to be a coaching client on the show, we're going to try to reach some people by Skype today, but until now they haven't answered yet. You can apply on coachingmovie.com slash apply, or maybe even you can post your Skype name if you want it publicly out there on the chat window, and we'll try to connect with you on Skype maybe later on during the show. Maybe not publicly if you would like to be anonymous. It's also possible that you can put this Skype name and Patrick is not going to show it to everybody. So if you would like to be a coaching client, welcome today. We will be also fishing in our group before we are kicking everybody into the swimming pool. So just in case we have two possible clients from our group. Yes, we're very curious what you think about this show and your ideas for the next show. So post them on the chat window as well, or you can write them after this show is over. And we'll see in the next episodes that we'll be broadcasting also from Los Angeles when we're going to start the, the filming of the coaching movie from mid-September, we'll be uh, sharing interviews with the world's class coaches out there. All right, let's get started. So yes, let's invite the director of our movie, Betsy Chassie. Everybody. <laughs> So thank you, Betsy, for joining us. Thank you for telling me this five minutes before we did that. I was actually going to be here, so I hope my hair is cute. It's fine. Everything's great. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so we're very curious about you, and especially this show is about inspiring people. You're a single mother. I am. Uh, you made over 35 documentaries. I have. Well, not documentaries, features, but feature films. Not yeah. all docs, some narratives, but well, yes. You're films. amazingly successful. Being a single mother and, and doing all this by yourself. So how do you do that? What's the number one habit that you have that you cultivate every single day that people at home can learn that can help them to be more successful success in life and business? I didn't do all of that I want to say while I was a single mom, but I did. I have done all of it, and I would say the number one behavior that I have is tenacity. I would say that I just refuse to give up. I believe wholeheartedly in my dream and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to get to, to create 
the world for it to happen or to make it happen. I just am tenacious. I'm like a little chihuahua. <laughs> so I understand you don't stop. You just move forward um, uh, like like um, a strong machine. You know, um, like you have this ones on the when you are skiing. You know, right. the machines that are producing the new snow. So you are just I moving forward. I wouldn't say I am always moving forward. I'm also I may be. Uh, seem like I'm not listening, but I'm a really good listener and I pay attention to my intuition. And I trust that the dream that I'm creating for myself is realistic for me. I, I, I am not, I'm not going to profess to say, okay, next year I want to be the greatest, you know, violinist in the world, even have never picked up a violin. That's not to say that you shouldn't, you know, anything is possible. I love that statement that anything is possible. But, you know, I'm willing to do, if I decide that I'm going to be the greatest violinist next year, then I'm also prepared that for the next year of my life, I'm going to focus all of my energy on becoming that, that there's work involved in that. And so ten tenacious tenacity means that I have a dream of creating at this moment you know that the coaching movie be you know empowering and emotional and, and inspiring and I'm not going to do anything other than whatever it takes to create that and what is your life motivation to do all of this so to do this stuff so um, I made a, most of my money I made more money making horror movies and softcore porn <laughs> than I did ever making what the bleep or anything like that it's true I know you people look at Patrick's like I can't believe she just said that but it's true um, I made a lot of money doing that and um, but I was killing my soul and I finally you know realized that uh, uh, my soul was way more important than any amount of money that I was going to make. And um, after the bleep came out, I had the, the blessed opportunity of meeting so many great people who really wanted, were really grateful that the movie helped them and, and inspired them. And that inspired me that I have a really big mouth and a big personality. And if I'm going to do anything with it, I'd rather do that than anything else. Actually, we saw it today. Let's, let's oh, show no. What did I do? Uh, oh, God. You'll see it in a moment. Uh, so, so we had some interactions yeah, today. No, I have no um, idea what you're going to show here. Am I in trouble already? Yeah, well, you, you could be. Oh. <laughs> Good. Let's have a look at, for example, here how you are planning the shots for the coaching movie today. This setup, I would have one or two cameras, at least, like you said, kind of movable. And then I would have one camera that float that could float or do something interesting because otherwise it's just sitting there for. Y yeah, yeah, I, I understand. That's why yeah. I thought. That's why I thought being able to go around with and them in a circle might be interesting. Maybe what we can do is is maybe um, it depends on the location, but maybe put a top shot. Is that something that... Can you do that outside though? Well, we could get it. No, no, but for some sessions, eh? not every session, but... So this is a, a small overview of what's happening It today. was a great hand you were I did the movie hand. Movie hand. You got me also, doing the movie hand. Like it's this. kind of a you big want in control hand. Yeah, you know? like kids call this the mad thing. Yeah. Though. They've, they've termed this the mad finger. So if I do this, it means that I'm... And a little bit of in her hands. This is it was a tiny movement, not, not so This is the motor huge, for thinking. But I think that you mentioned something about this. Yeah, if I do default. this, it's bad. But if I'm okay. doing one, I'm just thinking. Okay, so that's We that's all have fine. those things, you know, that yeah. we do. That, and I, I love those things because they, they, um, they make... Like, I don't even... When you see me doing something like this, that's, that means I'm in no time. It means that I'm not really... That I'm really present into what I'm dreaming and I think if you ask like besides tenacity that's another thing like I love I'm a visual being and so I really dream it out you know I'm not one of those like don't make a vision board that you should be a size two when you're only ever going to be a size you know eight that's like ridiculous but really in the sense of like dreaming out your plan visualizing it I do a lot of that and if in um, one hundred year uh, children at school would uh, have a homework to find something about you in encyclopedia probably kind of internet something I don't know if school the schools will exist uh, in 100 years or whatever maybe it will be online something school but if they read uh, something about you in encyclopedia what would you like um, that uh, they um, learn about you uh, well, that's your a, mission about this would be a big dream would be that I was one of the people that instigated a change in how Americans educate our children when we brought back emotional intelligence into schools how about that that we, we that we, instead of we teaching our kids about math, which is important, that we teach them about emotional intelligence, which is something that's been really a big passion of mine. Um, 
in, in readjusting how American schools teach. And uh, about your uh, movies, what would you like oh, them uh, to learn uh, from Encyclopedia about your movies, about uh, your person? Well, I think that I, that I, you know, I mean, that's it's a hard question to answer because it requires me to have a, uh, some sort of like need for a legacy, and I don't know that I have that necessarily. Um, I just think for now, for today, I just really want change. to make great movies mm -hmm. that that impact people to to know that they can be happy because I think everyone just needs to find their happy spot and if I can do like that for five people on the planet then I'm awesome. Wonderful. If you have a question for Betsy Ch Chassis here at this moment you can post it in the chat window and we'll choose just one question from, from you and we're very curious what you would like to know and ask uh, to Betsy Chassis. In meantime, here is another extract from uh, today's discussion of, of Betsy together with Dominic. It's the first day of filming. We have a little bit of uh, <laughs> things that we shot behind the scenes so you can see what's we going on in the creation of, of the coaching movie. <laughs> so let's have a look at this little piece here. Clutch. Okay, so you got one camera dummy, yeah. two cameras. So, so, so no, we have camera one and camera two on the client, and camera three is on the coach. Does that make sense to you for language? Client. So this was a small discussion about how many cameras we need for the for the coach. A hundred. We need a hundred cameras. <laughs> we need to rig the house with the cameras <laughs> everywhere. We're very very grateful to everybody who's yeah. supporting this movie because yeah. it's happening. Thanks to you, we've raised over half a million dollars, and, and this movie is happening right now. Actually, it's starting with this this show. We're going to have a look at your questions in just a moment. First, let's have a look at a few behind the scenes of uh, what was happening today, and you should be able to hear them. Still, my voice. You see one of our uh, coaches here speaking with uh, uh, David from from our audience. These are a few shots of. Um, experiences and talks yes. that we had today. This is Clinton as well, uh, talking with Betsy, he will be live uh, soon. Our coaching client for today's session. Emanuela, who came all the way from Italy. And we had a really nice discussion sitting in the sofa today and talking and brainstorming about a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good day. It's, you always have to start to plan before we start shooting so we can spend less time trying to figure it out on the set and, and more time in the sessions. So the coaching movie will show actual real behind the scenes of coaching sessions done by world-class coaches with just ordinary people to help them to become extraordinary inspired. And we would like to, to know what is, uh, what is happening in the heads of coaching clients. So how this process of transformation really happens in front of our eyes. And we were experimenting with a few shots and close-ups like you can see. It's, it's not color graded, it's not made perfect like you see in the cinemas yet. We didn't have the time, it's our first day. But uh, we have some really good ideas to make the film really beautiful and to make the most historic film about coaching of all time. So it will be not only about uh, stories of um, coaches, but also about um, how to make art uh, of, um, of coaching and how to tell a beautiful story of, um, of uh, the journeys that people embark on. Let's have a look at the chat window, what kind of questions we received today. And let this me disconnect myself first here. So let's have a look at what kind of questions we have for um, Betsy and... Um, all right, for example, from Mark. Speaking of honesty, Betsy, what's your approach to capturing honesty from the subjects that you're shooting on video? Let's, let's go back to Betsy and... Oh. Um, well, that's a good. I mean, that's a good question. I think every time a documentary filmmaker is trying to make a film, their goal is to capture authenticity and honesty. Um, and it's a skill because you know everybody that's gone through the that's going to be cast in the film as a client first and foremost has gone through a pretty rigorous casting process um, of which we've all three been involved with. And part of that is getting to know them, to experience them when there aren't cameras around, to get an idea of when they're, they're being real and when maybe they might be putting on a show. And then it's a skill mostly between Dominic um, and I of, of just 
knowing how to be present without being seen, um, which, you know, I promise I won't wear a loud orange dress on filming day. I mean, I tend to wear like all black. I tend to be quiet. I tend to just listen. And um, it's about building trust and relationship, which um, will happen with you guys but it, and the coaches, but it'll also happen with Dominic and I. We, we've already started spending time with them so that they get to know me. And um, hopefully, so far in all of the films that I've done, um, I create an open space, a sacred space for them to share with me their stories. And I seem to do that well enough that people are willing to open up to me and or to, to Dominic. It's about trust. It's about building that relationship. Great. So thank you very much, Betsy, for much. being here today right. with us. Bye! <laughs> and for the whole film, actually. She had a different uh, clothes on the film set today, so she did wear an um, orange dress. I do, I like yes. orange, can you tell? Yeah, can but you? orange is a nice color, why not? Okay, <laughs> my favorite. Okay. Alright, so let's invite to the show our next guest. He's one of the cast members of the coaching movie, an amazing coach. Uh, from Germany. Let's invite to our uh, online coaching live, uh, uh, it's not a film set, it's a TV set, uh, online, uh, Clinton Callahan. Come and join us, Clinton. Applause, everybody. Now, yes, now I'm feeling that I'm very small. I'm sorry, it's my yes. mother's fault. Okay. If you have a question for Clinton, he'll be answering one question from the chat. Feel free to post it now on coachingmovie.com slash live. But this feel, feels uh, reassuring, you know, your presence. And, and I observe you today and you're like a mountain, really like a mountain. Well, thank you. <laughs> you could have said worse things, so I feel very glad. <laughs> and we were speaking today about gremlins, actually. And um, here is a short Maybe, extract um, yes. in okay. just a moment. Um, Watch out for those gremlins. Yeah. They take your love, they take your heart, they take your relationship. You gotta watch out for those fuckers. They're the sneak up in you. These unconscious gremlins will eat you. And you know, if you, any part of your gremlin that you don't make conscious owns you. Watch out for those gremlins. Yeah. Watch out for those gremlins. Scared. Watch out for those gremlins. Nice. So, so maybe, maybe if you could uh, define what, uh, what is your definition of gremlins? Ah, uh, the gremlin. Each of us has a gremlin. It's Only one? Yes, mostly oh, the king of our good. underworld. It's the king or queen of our underworld. It's the one that's the active part of our psychological defense strategy. So it does everything it can to make sure that the thing we invented to survive our childhood works and is right. And so it will, it will sabotage basically everything in our world so that we survive, which puts us into a survival situation rather than a living situation. So the idea is to get conscious of your gremlin and shift to a life situation and using your gremlin as a tool and an aid to go into nonlinear creativity. And uh, do, uh, are we going to be with this gremlin all our life? Or can we all release your him? Life? No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's well, your friend. Yeah. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either either you make it conscious and own it and tell it to sit by your side, or it owns you like okay. that. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with it? Well, you feed it on a regular basis. You make a list of the 50 different kinds of foods that it likes to eat. You know, it could be stealing paper clips or being late or speeding in your car. Many different things it likes to do. Alcohol, all kinds of stuff, and. Uh, then you, you, make, you pick five of those things that you're willing to feed your gremlin on a regular basis, and it's kind of like a little dog. If you regularly feed your dog something it likes to eat, then it will start you know, working with you, and so that's how you do it. It takes a couple of months to do that. To so train your gremlin. We will still yeah. feed him um, all, uh, he, you have all, to feed all, the, him, yeah. all his life, an hour. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But can we change the, the food? Yes. For example, kind of my, you know, like healthy food? Yes. I mean, the gremlin's not an accident. Okay. The gremlin is not a design error. The gremlin is there actually to uh, do the kind of jobs that your box can't do. So your gremlin is there to uh, be a source of nonlinear creativity, and you give him interesting jobs to do, like call, you know, call the client that you can't call because you're too afraid, but your gremlin has no problem at all. Or making a boundary where you might go, I don't know, I don't know, and your gremlin just goes, stop it. Or like all kinds of jobs like that, your gremlin is ready there to serve you. Excellent. It's a great shift process. It's a wonderful transformation. Mm. 
Wonderful. Good. Again, if you're just joining the show, we are here live with one of the coaches that will be featured in the coaching movie, the world's first documentary about the coaching profession. And Go with his gremlin. And my gremlin, he's right yes. here by my side. Nice little gremlin. <laughs> if you have questions, just post them just next to this video on coaching.com slash live where you see a chat window and you can post your question to uh, Clinton right now actually, do it now. And in the moment we will be working with uh, one person and helping um, with uh, this person Gremlin. So welcome uh, uh, coaching clients uh, here. If you are one of them, write it down in the chat window. Actually we'll see if we can reach a client by phone um, on Skype right now. Let's see if this works out. And if not, we'll just take somebody from here, from the pool party that's going to start in about 15 minutes, or maybe 20 minutes, just after this uh, online TV show ends. I see that nobody picks up here, but let's, uh, is there anybody here in the room that would like, oh, hello. Hello, hello Rudolf, do you hear us well? Hi, how are you? Great. This is Patrick, Patrick Fizovsky, and then together with Kasia, we're uh, the creators of the coaching movie. And next to us is um, standing, if you're following us live, Clinton Callahan, an amazing coach from, uh, from Germany. Yes, and, and yeah. maybe some uh, question for you. Are you ready for a short uh, five minutes uh, coaching session with Clinton? Yes, ready. Now? So I'm ready. Excellent. So, yeah, let's get started. The floor is yours. Hello, Rudolf. Hello, Clinton. How are you? I'm fine. I'm looking forward to getting a chance to just talk with you for a couple of minutes here. Very good. What are you? What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? What's up for you these days? What do you have? What's your question? So I, I would like um, to know about uh, how to get better access to my my intuition. Your intuition. How to get better access to your intuition? Yes. Yeah. Is, is this a? How long has this question been been up for you? How long have you been thinking about this? Quite, quite a while. So right. this, um, I have an echo here. I have to move a little bit my, my pet. I hope it's better now. Okay. Um, and the thing is, I'm very much in, in my mind and I'm analyzing the things uh, quite a lot. So it's, and I know that, that is, um, I have my intuition and I, I have the impression that I can, if I have better access to it, Distinguished more from, from my mental uh, uh, access, and then I, I would have better possibilities to get in contact or to, to, to get in relation with people. Good. So that's what I needed to know: is that if you had enough experience to know that you are not the only person in the world who doesn't have intuition, do you actually trust that you have intuition? You've seen enough of it to know that you have. Yeah. Okay. Good. So I want to ask you a question. All right. Yes. During your day, what do you mostly listen to? I'm talking about yourself. In terms of yourself, when during your going through your day, you're talking to people, you're working things out, you're doing your stuff, what are you mostly listening to? Mm. I, I think I, I listen a lot to my thoughts. Fine. That's important information. Here's the distinction. Your intuition doesn't come through your mind and your thoughts and your thinking. Your intuition comes from a different channel. It comes from more of your physical body, feelings. It's a different sense. So if you're taking your, your attention during the day and putting it on your mind and your thoughts and your eyes and your thinking a lot, you're completely missing the, the, the whole intuition program. It's like you've got, you know, you're just, you're only listening to the mind. That's what we've been taught. We were taught that. So all through school, all through the advertisements, the media, everybody's talking about the mind, mind, mind. And the intuition is just sitting there. So I'm going to kind of offer you some experiments to do, okay? An experiment to do after we're done here, just to start doing in your life, your daily life. Everybody... Other people can do this too, which is to 
refocus what you're listening to. Start, start, the mind is like this ongoing radio that will never turn off, generating an endless stream of meaningless thoughts, and it's doing its job perfectly, and it will do it for your whole life. That's what the mind does, okay? So, like, you've got a clicker, you know, you've got like a little channel changer, like, um, three or three, five times a day, use your channel clicker and just go, click, and, and just go, let the mind go blah, 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 and just start breathing and getting more down in your body and just see what the intuition's saying. Now, at first, it's a weak channel. At first, you know, you might not get it right away. But when you get an intuition like, don't say anything right now, or call somebody on the telephone, or go outside and look up the street, or open the refrigerator and pull out the bottom drawer. You know, you never know what the intuition's gonna say. But just start following the intuition. Don't worry about trying to explain your behavior to authority figures, because that you will look a little crazy sometimes. Why did you look in the refrigerator? My intuition told me, you know, there's no real reason. So don't worry about trying to explain yourself. Five times a day, click off the blah blah machine, breathe, kind of center yourself, and hook into your intuition, just listen. And so you're putting your attention on a different thing instead of your mind and those thoughts. Just move your mind, move the, what is it saying? And sometimes try it. Sometimes call the person up, do what the intuition says. How do you think that would work for you? That sounds very good to me. So it's a good beginning. Great, great. You know, your next step after this won't happen until you do this step. So what, mm -hmm. could, could you do this? Could you do this? Yeah, I think that is possible. Okay, good. I think that's a great thing to, to end with then. Rudolph, thank you very much for this little conversation. Thank you, Clinton. It was nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> See you later. See you. <laughs> thank you very much, Rudolph. Thank you. It was a really great uh, short session. Good. Yeah. Good. And I was wondering in the meantime, um, how did you come up with your, that you have, um, I mean, how, how did you discover that you have uh, a gremlin or the, you know, the one that is really uh, picking on you? <laughs> you know, this is an you don't amazing need to tell the story. story. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to tell exactly what he's telling you because, mm -hmm. you know, but I really want to discover uh, how it was. <laughs> Well, I think the story, the really the story is about a 15-minute story. It's really a, a wonderful story to hear. Uh, and the short version is that uh, there was four of us trainers after a training going out to dinner one night. And one of the trainers was not really present and powerful in the, in the uh, training. And we couldn't figure out why. And so we were driving in a Mercedes-Benz and the owner of the car put the top down. This was 11 o'clock at night in Freiburg, Germany, and it was raining at the time. It was his Mercedes-Benz, he put the top down, and this guy who wasn't doing anything in the training was in the back seat, and he started squeaking. He went, oh, you can't do this to me, oh, you can't do this to me. And I turn around from my seat and I go, who is that talking? <laughs> Pim, that was his name, it was Pim. I go, we don't ever want you to go away, and where were you during the training? Where were you? And he goes, you didn't want me. And go, oh, Pim, we want you, we need you in the training. No, you don't. Yes, we do. Do you other guys agree? Yes, we agree. So all three of us agreed that we were going to protect him, and we went into a fish restaurant for dinner, and we had to protect him, and he was being uh, gremlin -y the whole time. So that was when we first discovered gremlin was that night. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's have a look at a question of one of the persons on the chat window because you can participate in this show on coachmovie.com slash live. And um, a question from guest 753 for you, Clinton. If everyone said that um, in coaching no advice is given, how can most coaches do coaching giving advice? Yeah, thank you. That's a, a really excellent distinction about what coaching is. And the, the, um, the thing about advice is that it comes from the other person. 
Whereas coaching itself is an experience. Coaching is an experience. And you, when I've had that experience, people have coached me. And when they coach me and I have that experience, my life changes. So the way they coached me is they offered a distinction. For example, this is a distinction. Is that, is that um, advice is advice. Coaching is coaching. Coaching causes a change in the person's experience. Advice is a story that comes from somebody else's experience. And so to cause the experience inside of a person, this is what I work for it, without advice. This is about experiments. It's about distinctions. It's about um, offering possibilities where none of it actually is advice. So the opening door, do they go through the door or not? If they don't go through the door, no problem. Whereas advice, you know, they have to follow the advice. So it's not about that. I hope this is somewhere in the direction of your question. Thanks. Thanks for your question. So considering gremlin, um, if you don't give advice about gremlin, so how do you help people to um, work with their gremlins? What? Well, you have to think about your navi system, mm -hmm. your navigator. So is your navi system, your map, you know, your road map, is that giving you advice? No, actually not. It's a map. It offers distinctions and clarity. It has a certain level of accuracy and you can use it or not. And so that's the difference, is that the, the map is not giving advice. So I'm providing maps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, Thank you very much. I will You're personally welcome. talk with my grooming today. <laughs> <laughs> and you after, can the, also, after the show. <laughs> and you here after the show, you can talk to your gremlin as well. Thank you very much, Clinton. Thank you. Thank, really you, enjoyed Thank this. you. Thank and you. And see you on the movie set. Great. <laughs> so great. Watch out for those gremlins. Yeah. They take your love, they take your heart, they take your relationship. You gotta watch out for those fuckers. They'll just sneak up in you. These unconscious gremlins will eat you. You know, if you any part of your gremlin that you don't make conscious owns you. Watch out for those gremlins. Watch out for those gremlins. Watch out for those gremlins. Nice. Not bad. Watch out for those gremlins. They take your love, they take your heart. And we're back in the studio, this time with, with Julie. Hi. Julie, Julie Starr from UK. Hello. Thank you very much, Julie. You're an amazing coach, especially for executives. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, and tell us um, a little bit what is unique about your coaching. Um, I, guess, I guess it's what makes every coach's coaching unique. It's an expression of who they are, of the journey they've been on this personal training that they've had, the personal development work that they've done on themselves. So yeah, I guess it's an expression of my journey. And uh, how, how did you start it? Because it's quite difficult to work with executives. Yeah, my business background is, is organisation. So originally, way back in the day, probably about 20 years ago, um, I was a project manager, change manager. I worked a lot in transformation project programs in organizations. So that's kind of the context that I'm familiar with. It's where I had the relationships and the contacts. If you have a question for Julie Starr, please post it right now on the chat window and we'll be having a coaching session live on the show in just a moment also. And tell me, Julie, if there is one thing that is really crucial to make executives better executives, yeah. what would it be? Um, a lot of my work is, is, is to help people get back in touch with themselves. Um, I think the pressure on executives to be driven by task, driven by delivery, driven by intellect is huge. And sometimes we get lost in that. Sometimes the, the, you know, the whole environment of, of change and the, the chaos that people have to deal with and the day-to-day the, you know, -day pressure of achieving. Um, somewhere in that we start to lose a sense of who we are and lose that connection with our hearts sometimes and our authentic self as you were saying earlier. And so yeah, a lot of my work is, is to help people kind of reacquaint themselves with themselves and, and start to operate more authentically so that the, the leadership behaviours that they, that they express in the organisation are in flow with that. Yeah. Wonderful. Shall we do a small tryout?
coaching session here on the show of Coaching Live. Just for clarity, it's not a real coaching session because it's just a very small five minutes. It's a speed. short one, so yeah. it's an experiment. Both of those uh, coaches, they they do longer coaching sessions. And just to make it over two hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is this is going to be fun. <laughs> All right, so let's do an experiment here live on the show. Is there anybody from the audience that you would like to be the coaching client of, of Julie for five minutes? Oh, yes, we see. Yes, yes. Right. Well, this somebody. one. Okay. Yes. Come Welcome. Down. Good. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Hello. What's Hi. your name? Kate. Kate. Nice to meet, nice you. To meet you. Thank you for Thank coming. You. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. Good. Hello, Kate. Hello. Okay. So I'm going to set the scene for you. So you Thank can... you. So last week, um, I had an issue where the surroundings that I've got, the people, started acting weird because my success has skyrocketed in the past three months. And I know that it's because I'm changing and they're not. Yeah. And all of that, and that's their issue and not mine. But the issue really is, what can I put into my life or a question that I can put into my own mind so that I don't feel so down when sure. that happens to yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. last week I wanted to just throw in the towel because I'd had enough, but I built a multi-six figure company and I've got staff now. And the real feeling is, what can I say to myself so that I don't go into that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's just take a moment, take mm -hmm. a breath, because this is a, you know, it's a strange environment yeah. we're in, and, and with permission, I'd like to try and just speak to you like we already know each other, I know mm -hmm. we don't know each other, but if we can just do this, yeah. so I can just have permission to speak to you quite straight, kind yeah. of like a friend will speak to you that, mm -hmm. that knows you well and feels like you've got permission. What is it you're currently saying to yourself that has you feel all that stuff you don't want to feel? I think really it's like, um, it's people that I wouldn't expect to have be like that, you know, who I've been around for years, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then all of a sudden just act out of context, out of weirdness, you know, just speak to me so strange, it's the, a bitchiness basically yeah. coming okay. across like that, and it was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. Okay. So okay. it's like, how do I deal with that, because I don't want to. I don't want to feel like that, so what do I do? How to... do you want to deal with it? How do you want to feel? Um, better than I did, because what happened was, it was a situation where I'd known somebody for years, and then because my book came out and it was a huge success, suddenly there was like, you've got no time for me no more. You, you're away doing this, you're away doing that, and it was kind of like a guilt kind of thing. Okay, so let's stop right now, cause it, because what I'm seeing is probably what's causing it, which right. is, you're staying in it, Mm -hmm. And what I'm encouraging you to do for my questions is get out of it. Right. So, so hear the question, what is it you want instead of that? Let's move towards something better. Yeah? What is it you want instead of that? Um, instead of that, I don't want that in my life. I want to Stop. Do you see? So there's a, there's a, a really subtle difference, in, and, and I do it, and you do it, and, and people listening will do it, mm -hmm. which is we focus on what we don't want. Yeah. And sometimes that creates an attachment to what we don't want. And what we need to do instead, a really simple switch sometimes, because sometimes it's, it's, it's as simple as letting go of the story, letting go of what we don't want, and focusing on what we do want in a situation. Mm -hmm. So if I ask you again, look at what it is that you do want, how you do want to feel. You've got this success. It's creating a response from people around you. It's not a response that you anticipated. It's a response you didn't anticipate. And this is all part of your journey towards something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So who are you on that journey of continued success towards something better? How does that person react and respond to this stuff that's happening? They react a lot calmer and they think about the process and they take time away and think how am I going to deal with this and before it's happened to me I just bless them, release them, let them go on their journey, I've just understood it's their journey and know that this is my mission, this is sure. my passion. Sure. So let's just take a moment to access that person, mm -hmm. that aspect of yourself is able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you know that that person, that you're being that person, what are the signs of that to you? How do you stand? How do you feel? I stand like I'm doing right now, really? straight up. Okay. You know, with the shoulders back. Yeah. Like, but when I'm like, I can feel the shoulders dip. Okay, you just did it. Mm. You see, you notice what happens when you flip back to it. 
So I said I might be a bit punchy and, and hopefully this is still okay. Let's not do that. So what this is gonna call, what I'm calling upon you to do is to kind of call attention to yourself when you notice you're doing that mm -hmm. and you're going back in because it's kind of like this form of self-sabotage that you're doing and it creates the illusion that you have a problem mm -hmm. and actually this is part of your journey isn't it to deal with it mm -hmm. to deal with life that shows up and people that show up and how it's occurring and it isn't like you thought it would be and that's part of the journey that, that grows you and strengthens you. So again, what are you going to do when people start to react and respond to you in this less positive way, this way that you didn't anticipate? How do you react to that positively? Positively, just I would say to myself, it's not my, it's not my issue. You know, it's, I'm going on my journey. I know where I'm going. I have goals for the next five years. I have to process my mind towards that and not towards uh, them. Uh, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, notice, attention. Yeah. Awareness gives insight, gives choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The more you notice what you're doing, the more self-aware you become of this silent saboteur and it could be a little bit like the gremlin yeah. idea, but it's, it's something that you're doing that is causing something that you're not enjoying. Mm -hmm. So the, op the opportunity is interrupt that, become aware of it, mm -hmm. attend to it, as in acknowledge it, think, okay, that's that thing I'm doing. Now, where do I choose to go with this? Now, the question I have, is this journey forward that you described, where you talked about how you're handling it, are you okay with this success going forward? How do you feel about your success going forward? I am ready for it. I am totally ready for it. I'm confident. I mean, it's, of course I have to get through fear. Sure. Because everybody has that fear. And you know, the girls are getting bigger, and yeah. the company's growing. But I face it dead on. I really do face my fears dead on. Okay. So it was, I'm not even going to go there. So you're ready for it, is mm -hmm. what I heard. Okay. So if you're ready for it, are you ready for this? This stuff that shows up? I'm going to be, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. So in this five minute experiment that we did, where are we leaving you? What, what thoughts have you got now? To go forward and not even to even go into the, that way. But I just, you know, just forward and leave them to do what they do stay in my presence where I am right now with a um, strong mind and respond to it, not react to it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. And there's something also important to, to, not to mention in, in situations like this. This is about detaching from that. And that means being okay with it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a leaving behind, which is a huh, leaving behind. And there's a leaving behind, which is Okay, that's that, yeah, that allows us emotionally just to be complete with it. Mm -hmm. So there's something else to notice is just be okay with it. Because if there's still some tussle, if there's still some internal righteousness or right wrongness happens, mm -hmm. there'll be an attachment formed with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's a decoupling from it that kind of in a blessing with it just says, okay, that, that is what that is. Mm -hmm. The person's doing what they're doing. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How's that? Thank you. Good. Brilliant. Good. Bless <laughs> Thanks you. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you very much. Um, well, thank you, Julie. Oh, wow. Yes, it was, it, it was great because normally, uh, Julie, your sessions are quite long. Oh, uh, gosh, yeah. So it's like, hours, yes, uh, two and a half hours. Yeah. So uh, you, you weren't able to to ask all those wonderful questions and uh, you had to, to bit reflect yeah. on your client that you normally you don't do. Yes, yeah. so it, it feels a bit yeah. fast, but, yeah. but hopefully there's some... Actually, principles. I experienced coaching with Julie and it was wonderful, wonderful questions and wonderful process. And uh, yes, it's mm -hmm. wonderful what you can yeah. do. And tell me, because um, you mentioned that your aim is to empower others, empower people. Yeah. What's, uh, what are... Um, 
maybe um, your tips, uh, some kind of uh, for starters, how they can, how how you, uh, how people can uh, start empowering themselves instead of uh, doing practices that hold them back. I think I think it begins with with accepting responsibility, and that means staying out of victim, staying out of martyr, staying out of blame because those are all things that disempower us and they can be lazy negative habits that we get into and it starts with complaining about the weather or complaining about our parents or complaining about our partners or our kids or whatever. As soon as we start to complain, we start to give away our power a little bit. So there's something essential about saying, I am the cause of my experience. How I respond, how I show up is up to me. I have choice about that. And that simple idea honestly it can be a lifetime journey because we can do it, in, you know, we can be really mature in work situations, we can be really mature in, in social situations and we go home and start to behave like toddlers, you know. Um, so it can be a lifetime journey and it begins with awareness, self-awareness. So the more we can practice lucid, conscious, present moment awareness of ourselves, of our situations, of what's really happening, it starts to be an essential building block on the journey forward, certainly. And there were some questions about NLP and coaching. But let's what have is, a look at What is the challenge. relationship between NLP and coaching? Yeah, that's the, what we can say in short. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so NLP is, is one of those, it, it's like a lot of models, a lot of things have come into the field of coaching, like neuroscience or like TA or transformational leadership. There's an awful lot that's been um, put into this whole field of coaching. I think NLP has a has a great role to play. It's it's not coaching in itself, but it has lots of tools within it. So it's built on principles of how do we empower ourselves? How do we model success? How do we communicate with ourselves and the world around us? And so there's some really interesting information in there that, that kind of fits very easily into a coaching conversation. So they, it has ready-made tools like you know, a well-formed outcome or shifting in what's called perceptual positions, how we're seeing things. It has linguistic information that's really um, interesting. The, uh, the technique or the principle I was just operating from them has a relationship to NLP in that um, it's based on a principle that we tend to move away from pain and towards pleasure and we can tell by our language, are we, are we stuck in the problem or are we moving towards solution? So yeah, it's, it's one of those really useful things that it, it, any coach that wants to equip themselves quickly with stuff they can use, um, it's very healthy to study because we work on ourselves first, we learn the tools by working on ourselves in order to offer them and work with them with others. Let's have a look at the last question okay. on the chat window okay. here. Um, let's have a look at guest 5330. Wow. Um, hi Julie, to be an executive coach, uh -huh. do you have to have a background in it, in being an executive yourself? No. no in, in my journey, no. What qualifies you is you. And yes, you have to have something to offer, you have to have a relevance. And my, uh, my formative life was a, as an IT project manager. So I wasn't an executive, I wasn't the kind of roles, the CEO and MD roles and, and, and exec director roles that I now coach, I, haven't, you know, I have not sat on a board of a large organization. What I, what I have done is learnt the distinctions, the principles, the tools, and got the experience where I can form conversations with people that are useful to them. Wonderful. So, thank you very much, Julie, okay, for joining thank us you. here. No, my and pleasure. See you on the film set. Love to. Yeah. <laughs> and if you there at home are are listening, so uh, we'd like to thank you for being part of this show. If you would like to be a client yourself on the show, it's very easy. Just to go to coachingmovie.com/apply. You see it appearing on the screen right now. And you can apply to be a coaching client as uh, one of the next coaching clients on one of the next shows. So uh, we're looking forward to, to, be, uh, to having you part of that. And thank you also for all those uh, great comments and questions because we really had uh, a lot of comments and we had to get through it quickly to, to find uh, the best question uh, for Julie and, and for Clinton. So thank you for being part of it. and. Uh, and welcome, join our next uh, webcast. 
Yes, uh, if you'd like to join the next webcast, it's very easy. Just go to coachingmovie.com slash live dash registration that you can see right now on the screen and you'll get updates about when the next webcast is happening. The next one uh, show right now will be two weeks from now. Also, we'd like to thank our broadcasting partners and partners of the movie. Let's have a look quickly here at the screen. So if you scroll down uh, the screen, that uh, you're watching this on coaching.com slash live, you'll see that there are lots of partners that are supporting the movie and we'd like to thank them all because it's thanks to them that this is happening. And also click on the links at the bottom of the page where you can watch this broadcast on other pages of other people as well. And they're really interesting and uh, supportive pages if you're interested in transforming your life, growing your business, and, and, and inspiring the world. So thank you very much for being part of Coaching Life and we're um, looking forward to see you on the next episode. Thank you very much, everybody.